It's the Gear Tester here. Welcome to my first range report on the Stevens Model 301. The 301 is a single shot break action shotgun that's quite affordable. In this review, I'm going to pattern this gun on paper targets at 20 and 25 yards, shoot some steel targets, as well as discussing different ways to carry and organize ammunition for this shotgun. I'll conclude this first range report by discussing the manual safety that comes on the 301. Before we accomplish any of those things, come along with me on this little run and gun on this woods walk with this excellent little single shot 410 shotgun. Thank you for joining me for this range report. So the ammo that I'm shooting in this review is the Remington Express XLR, which is supposed to be extreme long range shot shells. Of course, in 410, you can see here it's 410, three inches in length. The shell is going 1,135 feet per second. You can see there the loading of the ammo. And of course, depending on the choke you're choosing to use, you're going to be able to choke it down maybe a little bit better or a little bit less, uh, depending on the, the choke you got in your gun. What I like about this Stevens by Savage, a model 301 in 410, is the fact that it has a the ability to choke it. So it comes with a choke already in the gun, and you could buy other chokes. And so I believe this is a modified choke. All right. Uh, but you could screw that out, and you could put a tighter choke, or you could go with a less tight choke as well. And so that really makes this gun to me more versatile. And with with you shooting 410 ammo, I think that's pretty important because you've got a lot less uh, pellets in each of your shot shells. So here's a little 410 with those Remington extreme long range shot shells. And I really think with a single shot like this that having a side saddle like this, just a little Velcro side saddle, like $10 from Walmart. This one happens to be manufactured by Uncle Mike's, okay? That really makes things simpler for you to just be able to fire the gun, okay, and reload it like that. Alternately, you could use a quick strip, a tough quick strip. You guys can see that there. And I think most people associate these with revolvers but these ones are large enough for this model does 44 magnum okay and you can also you put a, a 30 30 ammo into it and so i thought i'd just try and see if the uh, 410 shotgun shells goes in it well what i like about these quick strips and this this configuration is you fire the gun you pop it open and you eject some shell and now you've got this big thing to hold on to and you just pop it off do like that Boop. new shell Okay, throw that in your pocket, shoot, pop it out, grab it like so. <laughs> That's kind of a simple way to reload your shotgun, and I've never seen anybody do that with these quick strips, but it seems like a very simple little application if you're going to take this gun hunting. I often have a quick strip of shotgun ammo when I go duck hunting with either uh, with, with buckshot, either a number uh, 20 gauge buckshot or a 12 gauge buckshot if we encounter a coyote as we're hiking. So I thought that was a cool little application and use for the quick strip that maybe you hadn't thought about. This is an excellent little gun. It's lightweight, it's compact. This is the youth model, so it's got a 22 inch barrel and it's got a, a stock that has a length of pull that they say is 12 and a half, but I measured it and it's really at 13 inches with the uh, butt pad that I'll show you there. Nice soft butt pad. It's got uh, sling swivels on it, which I think are good. I don't find that I tend to have a sling on my shotgun when I'm hunting, but I can see the application if you're going to do a lot of hiking or something where you're not trying to hunt while you're hiking. It also takes apart very nicely. We'll make sure that this gun is empty. Okay, you push down on this little button right there. Push down on it, and it just pops off. You can see there it's just sliding that down and then it bites onto that little component there. So we'll lay that aside. Then you just pop the action off and we have an amazingly small takedown little shotgun that takes apart very, very easily. To put it back together, we just reattach our barrel correctly, get that locked in, come up here, insert the foregrip correctly. Okay, punch down on that button, pop it in, and it's good to go. So that's that's a pretty cool little feature that it takes down. If I have one little complaint about this gun, 
this gun is uh, imported into the United States. I believe it's manufactured in China. And so there may be a situation where import laws are at work here. But what I'd really like to see is that because this is a co the compact version, it's got the 13-inch length of pull on it, I'd like to see the barrel shortened. And technically, you can have an 18.5-inch shotgun barrel, so they'd be from the chamber here out to about there. You could cut off about three plus inches of the barrel and make it even more compact and lighter weight. And because it takes in screw and chokes, I find that barrel length is much less important as compared to the choke you choose to use in a shotgun. So you already with the 410 take a hit on a couple hundred feet per second, depending on the barrel length compared to a 410 compared to a 12 gauge. But I, I would be willing to take the hit of a little loss of velocity to have the barrel even shorter. So I don't know if there's some import law that, that talks about the barrel needing to be at least 22 inches. I noticed that some of my older uh, take older single shot shotguns, my little H&R that I have in 20 gauge, it also has a 22 inch barrel. But I have thought about cutting the barrel down to the shortest possible legal length, according to the ATF, and then having it uh the the barrel cut so that i could also install chokes in it once again i'd like to see the barrel length shortened up and make it even easier to maneuver and particularly because it's a youth gun so there you go the stevens model 301 410 single shot shotgun we just shot at 25 yards shooting this little remington ammunition Okay, 410, seven and a half shot at 25 yards. Certainly not the best group, not a group that I'd probably want to shoot on a turkey. I'd probably want a more a, a tighter choke, but I think this would work just fine on shooting things like quail, uh, other upland game birds. I think that would be okay. I mean, we're shooting a 410. In my mind, I'm shooting a 410 because I think it's fun. Uh, because I have uh, a shooter that is small of stature or adverse to recoil, or because someone has had something like a, a, a shoulder surgery, and so they're wanting to minimize recoil. A, a 12 gauge or a 20 gauge is going to be cheaper in terms of the ammo, and it's going to have a lot more pellets in it. So you're going to get, even if you have the same dispersion of shot, you'd get more, more, more shot pattern here on this 8 inch circle there so we're gonna shoot a little squirrel target here a shoot and see squirrel target at about 20 yards and see what the pattern is on that all right so we just shot this little ground squirrel at 20 yards with the little 301 stevens single shot 410 shotgun and we're using kind of a longer range uh remington ammo and i'll, I'll annotate that here exactly what we're shooting but it's a three inch uh cartridge or shot shell that we're shooting there but that's definitely a, a dead ground squirrel okay with minimal recoil out of a gun that is very uh lightweight and relatively compact it takes down easily and one of the features that i like about this is the way the safety operates and i like this better than a lot of safeties i've seen incorporated on guns this Stevens Model 301 is an updated version of the H&R shotguns and others that went out of business here. And so in order to import them or because the lawyers the, for the company would prefer that, that there was a safety on this gun, they did install a safety on it. But you cannot switch the safety on with the hammer in the down position. Now it has a, a transfer bar safety there. So unless the trigger is pulled to the rear, even if this hammer gets hit, it's not going to detonate the cartridge or the shot shell in in the uh, firearms action there. So it's got that, but this is a safety because in order to make this gun safe after you cocked it, let's say you decide not to shoot, you have to pull back on the hammer, pull on the trigger, and lower it down like so. And that could lead to an accidental discharge. And if you weren't uh, following the rest of the gun safety rules or firearm safety rules, you could discharge a firearm. And if your barrel was pointed in a direction that something or someone that you loved was in you could have a major accident so installing the safety it only works when the hammer is in the fully cocked position now i can put it on and now i can take it off and i actually very much like that because if the safety is on the gun that the hammer cannot strike the firing pin and i really like that now in this position like that we can pull the hammer back just a little bit and let it down and not even have our finger at all on the trigger and so if that transfer bar safety is working correctly the gun can't go off and i think that this that and i think that this kind of a safety 
made this gun safer by but minimized your chances of messing up and not and not being able to shoot when and if you want to fire the firearm because a safety like this that could be switched on or off with the hammer in the uh, down position because the way i run this gun okay is i walk around the woods finger off the trigger keeping the barrel pointed in a safe direction and then when it comes to some point where i want to shoot i raise the gun up when i have my uh, shotgun bead on target i cock the hammer and then i pull the trigger but if this safety could get switched on like marlin a 336 or other marlin lever guns they have a safety a tang safety here that goes across and then you can fully operate the gun and it just doesn't work because the safety is on i misspoke the Marlin rifles have what's called a cross bolt safety, not a Tang safety. And I'm probably going to make that mistake here a couple more times, but I'm making that correction here. A cross bolt safety, not a Tang safety. So whoever designed this safety, for whatever reason, did a really good job in that the safety can only be activated when the firearm has been cocked. So you're not walking through the woods, okay? And you go to fire your firearm and you pull back and you pull your trigger and the gun doesn't discharge because the safety has been left on. So I think that the way they designed this safety shows that this safety was designed by somebody that uses and carries this gun to hunt. And it matters when the firearm can be fired. In, in, in the literature that Stevens and other uh, the companies have put out on this gun, uh, they talked about how you could go into the woods turkey hunting in this condition. So there would be no clicking of the hammer as you you know click as you drew it back to full cock to fire the gun and in this condition you just flip the safety off and then pull the trigger uh, you know i think that's kind of a, a poor way to use the safety i would just cock it boom i'm going to fire right after i finish cocking the gun anyway and i would use this safety to decock the firearm in a way that means that i'm not going to have an accidental discharge put it on cock it pull it there now the trigger is not being depressed so that transfer bar safety is working on my favor and now the gun is safe and i assume i'm understanding how this safety works i didn't help design it i don't know anything about it i'm not paid by this company uh, i just enjoy doing reviews so you can see here dead dead ground squirrel boom and it's interesting recently i was out uh, with some of my buddies we were out shooting and we were shooting center fire guns and there were some ground squirrels around and we, we all had 22 pistols and we tried to shoot some of those ground squirrels, but we could not get close enough and we were not accurate enough with our uh, 22 caliber handguns. Well, with this, I don't think that would have been a problem. And so it's a cool little gun, light recoil, um, expensive ammo. It's going to be about a dollar a shot. That's what 410 runs. But I think this is, would be an excellent gun for introducing a young person to shooting a shotgun. And I do that on static targets rather than skeet initially. And I think it's an excellent gun for individuals who may, adults that may be recoil sensitive or maybe have injuries um, or um, arthritis and things like that where they don't want a lot of recoil but they still want to shoot a shotgun. What follows here is going to be a continued discussion on the safety on the Stevens 301. I really like the way this safety was designed and I'm going to do some live fire display of how the safety works. If you like this video so far and you don't really care about the safety, you don't have to continue watching. I really appreciate the forethought and intentionality that went into integrating this safety into this gun and I, it excites me. So I'm going to talk for another four minutes here about that safety and, and live fire display it to you because I think it's it's that uh, valuable and that exciting to me personally. So I just want to clarify the safety and how I think this thing operates a little bit more here. So I'm taking a live round. Primer's not been fired. We're in a safe direction. Everything is safe here. Going to insert that in. And as a general rule, I walk around the woods like this. Then I cock the hammer. So I bring it up and I fire. But if you did that and you now want to uh, have the gun in a safe condition, it means that you have to pull back on the hammer and now pull down on the trigger and let it down like so. And if you're holding that trigger down and this slips out of your hand, the gun goes off. And that could be very detrimental for a, a dog or a loved one or a vehicle that's downrange there. So what this safety allows a person to do, and, and the whole a whole family of firearms like these, these single shot 20 gauges, 12 gauges, 410s that have been produced for many years in the United States and I'm sure around the world, have not had a safety like this. What I like about it is that it, without this hammer being cocked back, the safety can't be put on. And there are firearms 
like the Marlin family of lever action rifles and maybe others that I'm not aware of or not thinking about right now that have a tang safety here that you can put across and the gun operates, you run the lever, it operates completely normal, but the gun cannot discharge because you've got a safety that's, that's stopping your hammer from striking the firing pin and that's a problem. It's a problem to have a safety on a firearm that is likely to be engaged accidentally or unintentionally that renders the gun inoperable and the user would likely overlook that. The footage you're watching here is of me two years ago snowshoeing back from checking my trap line and I'm carrying a Marlin 336 Dark on me. You can see that little red dot that's bouncing up against my chest there on the side of the gun. That's the cross bolt safety on the Marlin 336 and it's easy to accidentally engage that. I disengaged it because I was hiking back and I was worried about bears and thought I might need to deploy this rifle in a self-defense scenario against a four-legged predator. This footage you're watching here is of a friend of mine shooting my Marlin 336 Dark with the safety unintentionally engaged. He racks the gun and then realizes it's not going to be functional. This footage right here is of me filming uh, footage oh, for my experience. range report 2 on the Marlin 336 Dark and I accidentally engage it there as well. What I love about this safety is that it cannot be switched on when the firearm is in a safe condition. I can only switch it on after I've cocked it like so. Now I can put the safety on and now if I go to fire the gun it doesn't discharge. Now when I want to release the safety, okay, I'm going to pull back a little bit on the hammer. I'm not pulling the trigger so the transfer bar is not engaged. I'm able to take the safety off and lay it forward and it can't go off. And just to show you that it can't go off, we'll put another live round in the gun. We're in a safe direction. Cocking the hammer back, I'm putting that safety on. Now I'm pulling the trigger. Didn't go off. Cocking the hammer again doesn't go off then I just cock the hammer back a little bit but I'm not engaging the transfer bar because I'm not pulling the trigger now like this and it's not going off this is a very safe firearm in this configuration and it's well designed so that if you're hunting or using this gun to maybe even defend yourself if you had to you will not accidentally engage that safety as long as you leave that hammer down as you walk around Thank you very much for your views and your subscriptions. My goal here at the Gear Tester YouTube channel is to produce quality video reviews on the topics of shooting, camping, and survival gear. I've certainly talked a lot about the Marlin 336 here. I have a playlist that contains seven videos that feature that rifle heavily. You could support the Gear Tester YouTube channel if you like this video by going and watching other videos I've produced in the past. Go check out that playlist on the Marlin 336. You can also watch videos on other products that I've reviewed or will soon review in the future. So make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm, I'm going to be reviewing products here in the next couple months like the Savage Rascal, a single shot bolt action rifle. I'll be releasing a full length review on the Cold Steel SRK, a high value fixed blade knife. I'm also going to be releasing a video here next month on the Grand Force Brooks Outdoor Axe. I've put a lot of work into producing a full length review on the Topps Knives Mohawk Hunter, which over the last year has become really my go to medium fixed blade knife, and I think it's a fabulous blade. You can go find that video right now live on my YouTube channel. Watching the content I produce is a great way to support my channel. You can also support my channel by buying products from our sponsors, affiliates, and friends. Companies like Firebox Stoves. Excess Sites, Occam Defense Solutions, Valley Food Storage, and Tops Knives. Thank you very much for your views and your subscriptions. This is the Gear Tester signing off.